horrible, horrible things are about to go down. We've already had the Paris attacks happen um, a couple of days ago. Unfortunately, many people died. Uh, many people who were French. Um, in response to this, Facebook um, had this thing where they had people put a French flag over their Facebook profiles. I believe the reason why was to um, signify that we stood with these people who died in France. That's why I covered my Facebook profile with the French flag. Unfortunately, as it seems, later on I realized that this was not about the individuals who died in France. This was not about the actual living, living breathing individuals who got murdered mercilessly by these immigrants in the French country. It had nothing to deal with individual people. It had to deal with a strong sense of nationalism. A sense of nationalism in the way of which would ignite the hatred of an entire group of people, Muslims. Now, of course, I will be the first to say that Islam is a religion of which that is diametrically opposed to Western human civilization. It allows for the murder of women based upon things that are not women's faults. Um, it allows for the murder of apostates within its religion. It allows for the murder of people who do not believe in Islam. It also allows for the genital mutilation of women in the Middle East during their time of infancy. This Islam, Islam is a deplorable religion. It is a deplorable culture. And I would go as far as to say the truth, that it is a inferior culture to Western cultures, like that of Judeo-Christian societies. Now, this is not saying as though all Muslims are the same and they all believe in this extremist point of view. But when you look at religion, and when you look at what it actually says, the most extreme of those who believe in the most extreme ideologies revolving around a religion are those who actually accurately represent the religion in itself. I will not go as far as to say that people who just happen to be religious are bad people. I will not say that. But I will say that with full and total uh, conviction that religion, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, any religion that allows for the murdering of innocent civilians based upon their non-belief in that religious ideology is inferior to one that does not have the belief that people who do not believe in an ideology should be put to death. This goes along for any ideology, whether it is a political ideology, a religious ideology, or some other, um, some other ideology altogether that I've never heard of in my life. Any ideology of which its extremists believe that it is okay to murder a handful of people that do not go along with their ideology is inferior to human civilization, and it must be eradicated. I am not talking about the people of the religious ideologies. I am talking about the ideology in itself. But to digress into the topic that I was previously speaking about, it is really unfortunate that those people died in France. That's why I put the French flag over my Facebook profile. But what I have seen again, 
as I had said, was rabid nationalism calling for a destruction of an entire peoples, of an entire civilization, people of which live within these nations, people of which might be of Christian faith or Muslim faith or Islamic faith or even maybe Jewish people and atheists. I do not agree with this at all. I believe this is a very horrible road that we are going down. We do not want to respond in a way of which neoconservative pundits might want you to respond. See, the thing about politics is that the wheel turns in the sky over and over again. One day, or a couple, four to eight years, there's a Democrat in office. The Democrat in office has democratic views of which do not work because they are not implemented in a way which actually makes people happy. Many democratic views are good, like those of apparently anti-war, of non-interventionism. These are the ideas of which Democrats hold which are good, not intervening in somebody else's business and staying other out of their business. Unfortunately, a lot of Democratic people, Democratic uh, presidents, don't seem to go along with this ideology. Instead of saying, let's get out of Dodge and let's not get into these wars and focus on our own people, and what they do is they start another war. And unfortunately for the Democrats, their economic views, as much as well-meaning it may be, they just simply do not work. They do not work with the dynamics of the economic situation of which is reality, the real natural processes of the free market. And whenever you try to take that by the horn and change it in some way, you are going to get massive blowback which will cause a large rise of the rate of unemployment and a large rise of the rate of monetary inflation or fiscal inflation that creates more people to be living in a less idealistic economic circumstance than they were four years ago. Now it's the same way with the Republicans. The Republicans are shitty on war and most of the Republicans out there are neoconservatives anyway. They'll go out to war and they start these destructive, horrible wars that kill people that we may have not even known of. Strangers, complete strangers that we would have been complete strangers with for the rest of our natural born lives. They go out and they create wars with these individuals that are in the Middle East. And not only that, but their rhetoric is sound economic policy, which is followed by another lie, just like what the Democrats do with war. They will have rhetoric, which is strong, which is good economic policy, but they will put measures into place of which help their cronies get into power and help fiscally inflate the economy through stimulus packages which are taxpayer funded. Now, the entire reason why we have ISIS attacking France, why we have these Muslims attacking the Middle East, uh, attacking the European Union and the European countries is because of the very fact that we have displaced them by going to war with these individual people and basically creating an environment of hostility towards those of which have done them wrong. And even furthermore, a lot of these people happen to have an ideology that is diametrically opposed to Western human civilization, diametrically opposed to universal law, universal law of which exists. It is an objective value of which everyone with a conscious can agree upon. This universal law is not to murder, rape, steal. 
under any circumstances. But unfortunately, due to the cultures, due to the religions that are diametrically opposed to the Western civilization of understanding these universal laws, you will get blowback. You will get these people flooding into these countries and killing people because they are angry, upset, and downright feeling that they are justified in killing their enemies, which created this havoc of a situation that allowed these refugees to get into a certain point where they actually had to move. Now, I am not saying that all of the refugees are bad people. Hell no. I am not saying this. I am not saying that just because somebody's skin color is different than mine that they are bad people. I am saying we have to treat this as though it is a state of emergency. We cannot get ourselves into another war. It doesn't matter what you think the war might be. The truth in the matter is is that the war is only done through the purposes and realizations that our central governments might have. And this goes for every government out there. This goes for the United States government. This goes for the Canadian government. This goes for the Russian government. It goes for all of these governments. It doesn't actually have to deal any with anything with the civilians of which live in a nation. No matter how high their nationalism might be at this very moment or in the moments before. If we get into another war, we are going to go extinct. We are talking about thousands, uh, hundreds, no, let me scratch that. We are talking about 90 or so governments of which have their own interests, are not beholden to any forces of the market, are not beholden to people's um, understanding of whether or not they can hold their, withhold their financial services from them in order to stop anything that they disagree with. We are talking about people who can tax their civilizations, tax their nations at any percentage rate that they want to in order to get the, what they want. We are talking about 90 or so nations and we are talking about maybe 20 or 30 different nations which have the capability to launch a nuclear missile. We cannot go to another war. If we go to another war, we are signing the warrant for our fucking death. We will see the death of not only Western civilization, but we will see the death of humanity if we continue with this idiocracy what we need to do, unfortunately, at the moment of time, because we have nations, is we need to bring our fucking troops back. Get them the fuck out of the Middle East. Manage our own. Close down the borders. And do not just close down the borders to Muslim immigrants. Close down the borders to everyone. Yes, we have created this mistake. We have created this atrocity. But fortunately, we still are able to help by getting the fuck out of foreign entanglements. And as much as I like to have those immigrants have a home to stay, unfortunately, with them, with the well-meaning people, there are a whole slew of individuals who want to do us, our governments, or whatever, the civilians within governments, not saying that we're all a collective group, but they want to do the civilians of these countries harm because they believe that we, whether you're anti-war or for the war or whatever 
you might be, they believe that all of us are to blame for the actions of which our government partook in. And these governments will not protect you in a way to go out and fucking bomb nations. The only fucking thing we can do is shut down our borders to everyone to make sure that nobody gets in and nobody gets out. As unfortunate as it might seem, as unfortunate as it seems to me, because I really do not like this idea, we need to stay to our own. And we need to evolve in which a way where we understand what governments are. We understand that governments are not just something that is a centralized authority that imposes its will against the citizens. Governments are inevitable, but it is how we manage them. It is how we manage them. If we manage them in such a way where we are so detached from reality that we believe that coercive governance can actually bring upon any good change, and maybe I'm being hypocritical here, but if we are to the ideology that our coercive governments can bring upon any good change, we are <coughs> living in a delusion like we have been for the past thousands of years as a human species. What we need to understand is that government is inevitable, but it is only inevitable in the fact of which how we actually put them into place. I am a voluntarist. I do not believe that there shouldn't be any government. It sounds quite crazy, doesn't it? Because voluntarism is anarchism, isn't it? Well, no, it's not. It's a horrible, horrible way of actually describing what voluntarism is. Voluntarism is the ideology that people should govern themselves. People should govern their property. And people should have the ability to get into contractual agreements with other people in order to be governed if they so feel fit. But they also should have the ability to exit that contract as easily as possible. If a, they feel as though they do not want to be partaking in it anymore, or, A, or B, that they feel as though their government is not doing what they want them to do, and have the ability to withhold their finances, withhold their finances from them, by going into another area on their own will, without a passport, without anything that they need to get, that they need to give their power over to. They can pay fees and taxes and whatnot and whatever they want to, but people should have the ability to come and go as they want to and withhold their financial assets from any one of which they feel fit. Everyone should have the ability to hold their financial assets, to hold their own self from anyone else of which they disagree with or do not want to associate themselves with. They need, we need to have a civilization of which has total discrimination allowed. Whether or not it's right or wrong in a way of which it makes sense or which it doesn't make sense, like racism. All of that should be allowed. The reason why is because this is the only way that human civilization can actually see and taste the next era of which it is coming into. We have one of two choices. We can either annihilate ourselves by going into World War III and never see another generation come after us where we can truly recognize that the only way that we're going to be able to survive is through evolving. Like we have been through the thousands upon thousands of years that we have been on this planet. I mean, hell, 
we've grown up to a point where in our evolutionary timeline we have become the dominant species. Now the only threat, the only existential threat that we have is our, against our own because we believe as though we need to be our brother's keeper. Be the keeper of those who do not care about us. But the fact in the matter is, is that we need to understand that we as individuals are the only ones of which can protect ourselves. But at the same time, we need to be interdependent within the communities of which we want to forge on our own. So, humanity, my fellow human beings, even the Muslims and the immigrants out there of which I spoke to about in this video, are we as a species going to annihilate one another over the whims of the lowest of the low and the most psychopathic in our human species, or are we going to rise and truly recognize what our evolutionary path is supposed to be. Are you and I and everyone that you know and everyone you don't know going to die over stupid shit that we've been doing for thousands of years and trying to get ourselves out of? Or are you going to truly recognize the free man or woman that you truly are? We rely and depend upon one another, but at the same time, we have to realize that ourselves as individuals are the only ones who can truly recognize what we need. Are you with me, humanity? Or are you against yourself? Because I can tell you this, if you're with me, you're with yourself. You're not necessarily with me as an individual, but you're out for your own self, and that's a good thing. It's not selfish. It's reality. And you should have the ability to decide whether or not you want to do whatever you want to do with your own time and money and feel the consequences. But altogether, we are interdependent. We are all relying upon one another as a human civilization, as a human species. So again, I'll say this again. Are you with me? Or do you want to commit suicide? I'll let you decide.